Good morning, how are you? Yes, I know, I've got my Chris Dangerfield hat on this morning. Um, here you go. Go on. Oh, yeah, greasy hair as well. Hey, <laughs> good, 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 good. Anyway, I thought I'd just uh, say a couple of words about um, old Ricky Gervais. Um, everybody else seems to have sort of put their two penny thing in and everything like that. Um, controlled opposition, really. <laughs> yeah, basically. I think he was reading off an auto cue. So um, everybody knew what he was going to say. So they weren't sort of, oh my God, what has he said? No, they all knew it was coming. And I think the people who run the Golden Globes and everything like that thought if they had somebody, if they had that sort of thing said, a bit of truth said and everything like that, it would sort of like give the publicity to the Golden Globes. And it has done. But I think... Because no, I didn't. I, I didn't watch the Golden Globes or anything like that. But I saw his speech virtually about five minutes after he finished it. Because on Twitter, Twitter's very quick for dropping things in. Um, I was on Twitter at the time, and basically, I think that I think it might have backfired for the Golden Globes because Ricky Gervais seems to have um, done very, very well out of it. But the Golden Globes have been ignored because it's sort of like he sort of like outshone the Golden Globes. But that sort of thing is, um, people are finding it boring, boring, boring nowadays. Like, you know, because it's, it is just a, you know, self-congratulatory. I want to thank my mother, my father, and everybody who's helped me on the way up. Like, who hasn't raped me. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. I think it was just controlled opposition. I think it might have backfired as far as the Golden Globes are concerned because I think they just wanted the publicity for their event. But um, I think the the person who benefited from the whole thing is Ricky Gervais. Because um, believe it or not, quite a lot of Americans didn't know it. And one thing about Ricky, he's a working class English lad like, you know. He learnt his trade. I'll tell you where he learnt that trade. At the dinner table, around the dinner table with his brothers and sisters. Because I grew up in a very, very similar sort of like thing. And I I, know, I mean, dinner time was vicious. <laughs> you shred, I mean, basically, if, I mean, I've seen somebody in, uh, in our table. It was only, there's only three kids and two adults. But I remember, um, so I, th I remember we had a pop, we had a, a a saying like if somebody really absolutely shredded somebody um the word was top pocket <laughs> top pocket yeah like you know like a snooker reference and um yeah yeah in the button old mate that's not too bad yeah 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 so yeah even if you were the even if you were on the receiving end and somebody absolutely said you'd have, you'd have to look at it oh yes that was a good one but the problem was, the problem is if you grow up in that sort of environment, that sort of working class English environment, and you take those skills with you out into the world, into the middle class world, where they're all a bit sort of like sensitive, and you hit them with those sort of like bombs, um, people think you're um, terrible and awful and evil and quick and everything like that. You know? And still, to this day, I have to temper my mouth when I'm out. And I am known for actually dropping bombs. My mum was the worst, actually. My mum was the worst. God, she used it. Oh, God. I can remember once. We had a friend who was very, very old school, British, sort of like racist, basically. He was a, he was a, he just, I ate coons, sort of thing, like, you know. And, um. We went to a party once. <laughs> My mother, like, you know, and it's sort of like, you know, it's a sort of like a crossover, friendly family doing everything like that. And this guy's name was Ted. Okay. And there was loads of black people at the party as well, like, you know. <laughs> and uh, my mum's in the kitchen and uh, Ted's standing there talking to this black geezer and this black wife, like, you know, being polite and everything like that, like, and my mum walks over to her and she stands there and she says, I thought you hated niggas, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, like, that was hilarious because the whole place has went absolutely silent, like, and I had to sort of grab hold of her and said, belt up. Oh, she said, no, she said, he's a fucking hypocrite. And, um, so, basically, 
basically it's hypocrisy and that and hypocrisy is a soft target really because let's face it to be human to, is to be hi hypocritical we all are we're all hypocrites and when everybody says to me, oh you're a hypocrite I'm going to look down on you like you know that's just false bollocks like because we're all hypocrites we all can be hypocrites like you know and um Ricky Gervais was just he had soft targets, the hypocrisy of all the stars and everything like that, you know. Um, and Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself, yeah, no. Yeah. Electrical cables in the room? What's he on about? Anyway, Jordan Peterson yesterday tweeted uh, um, that he's going to be presenting the awards at the... It's Grammys or Oscars or whatever they call them. I don't know. I, 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 is, is there a difference between the Grammys and Oscars? I don't know. But, like, he's going to be presenting a, award, a big awards show, like, you know. And I put a little tweet out saying, answering him back, because he was just announcing the fact that he was going to be presenting them. I think they must have got straight in after they saw what thing done and got Jordan in. And I said, wouldn't it be wonderful if George went all Ricky on them? But without the humour... Now, that would be really hilarious, you know, if he stood there stern face and actually sort of pointed out their thing without a smile. You know, because Ricky can do it, he can smile as he kills. But um, if Jordan did it without the smile, God, that would, those, those arrows would go in and they would stay in. Those barbed arrows would go in and stay in. But I don't know. Anyway, a short one today. Have a good day. And enjoy life, because it ain't a fucking rehearsal, mate. It's a real thing.